Alright, in this video I'm going to go through the carpal bones of the wrist, the metacarpals of the hand, and the phalanges of the fingers. So if you don't have this worksheet, you need to go to Google Classroom and print it out for my students. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So we're looking at the eight bones of the carpal region here in purple in the wrist area and they're going to match up with the radius and ulna of the forearm, primarily the radius. And um, you can see I've already printed here that there are eight total bones and they're going to be situated mm, for the most part into two rows of four bones each. So you can look down here at this purple and see that they're not really in perfect rows. We have kind of a curvature. So I've created this table here to illustrate how we can put these into two rows of four and then also how to apply, I'll tell you how to apply that to the diagram. So let's get our bearings with this table. Um, it's important to understand what direction, um, what the directions would be in regard to this table. So we're imagining that these purple bones here are going to be neatly placed into this perfect little table of two rows um, with four bones each. So at the upper end of this table, this is where the forearm bones will be. Okay, so your radius and your ulna are going to be in this position. Just like in the diagram, your radius and ulna would be in this position extending upwards on the page. On the bottom of the, di of the um, table would be the hand and finger bones, so those would be underneath. Again, we're looking just at this purple region here with the eight bones. The thumb side, the lateral side will be over here and the pinky side will be over here. So the image that I have here coincides with the way that this table is organized. Now if you look at your worksheet underneath you'll notice that the hand is in a different position. So I'll go through this table and then I'm going to switch gears in the presentation and um, go right to your worksheet and help you fill that one out. Okay so two rows of four. I'm going to start here in this um, box and these are some strange words. So the first bone that's going to be on the proximal side, um, starting on the thumb side in the proximal row, that is called the scaphoid and for me that's the starting point. Um, there are many many mnemonics out there, sentences that you can use to remember these different bones and they all start with something that references the scaphoid. So scaphoid is the first bone. That's going to be this guy right here. And again, I'll teach you how to recognize the scaphoid and uh, how to correctly label all of these bones in a little bit. So the next one is called the lunate. And these are named for shapes and positions and all, all sorts of various things. Then we have the triquetrum. Some people will call it the triquetral bone or you can hear um, people say the triquetrum, which is what I use. So scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform will be the last one in the proximal row. Um, scaphoid is going to be an important starting point for us and an easy way to check yourself to make sure you're labeling them correctly is that the pisiform is quite a small little bone and it's actually sort of stacked on top of the triquetrum. So if we transfer these four labels, these four bones, to this diagram down here, and I'm going to tell you we're going to start right here, scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum is kind of in the background, and here's the pisiform that it's stacked on top of it, closer to us as the viewer. And this is a palmer or an anterior view, so we're looking at the palm of this particular hand. Now for the next row we're going to go all the way back to the thumb side. We'll be on the distal row so we'll start here and we have two words that are pretty close together in their spelling. We have the trapezium first followed immediately by the trapezoid and I'll, again I'll give you a way to remember that they're in that order. Um, it'll be followed by the capitate and finally the hamate. So these are the eight bones of the carpal region. Now, these two words, in order of your mnemonic, and you can go ahead and Google a mnemonic for the carpal bones and pick one that suits you. Um, you know, many of them happen to be inappropriate, which is why I'm not going to discuss them. But you can pick one that starts with S, 
in whatever sentence you choose, S, L, T, P, T, T, C, H. That'll be your letters in order. So first off, you notice that we have three T's, so you're going to have to differentiate with them. Uh, the mnemonic that I learned way back, the triquetrum actually uh, matched up with the word tri, T-R-Y. Um, so perhaps you can find the mnemonic that has that. These two, um, they're in alphabetical order. So trapezium, we're similar all the way up to the I versus the O. Trapezium comes before trapezoid. That's how you remember. So S, L, T, P, second row, T, T, C, H. So trapezium down here in the diagram, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate is where we end up. Now, let's transition to the... Um, let's see, whoops, I opened the wrong thing. Here we go. So here's your worksheet. Let me scroll down so you can see. So you already filled that in. And I'm going to show you this guy. Let me move down. Ah, what happened? I love technology. There we go. So the hand is facing a different way. Okay, this is the diagram that I chose, and it happens to be facing a different direction, but no big deal. We're smart. We know how to do this. So how do we figure out where the scaphoid is? Well, if you go back to your table, the scaphoid is always going to be here. This is the proximal row on the thumb side. Proximal row, thumb side. So let's scroll down and we'll find our proximal row. Remember, proximal means closer to the point of attachment of the limb or essentially up the limb. This direction for this diagram is up the limb, towards the shoulder, towards your body, torso. So we want the proximal row is going to be right here. And we want the thumb side. So we're going to start right here. It happens to be letter A in this picture. So this guy right here is the scaphoid. And a rule when you have a diagram uh, like this and it doesn't have letters to help you and you know you don't get the label radius and ulna um, the scaphoid is your most important starting point once you have a mnemonic that you're following remember we're gonna go S um, L T P and then the other row T T C H so S L T, the first T is triquetrum, P, look at how it's stacked on top of it. All the way back to the thumb side, trapezium, trapezoid, those are in alphabetical order. Capitate, hamate's got this weird hook on it called the hook of the hamate or hamate hook, H. So how do we know? Here's your rules. Let me type this out. To find the scaphoid. you start on the proximal row thumb side and another rule about that is that it the bone must touch the radius which happens to be right there so scaphoid makes a joint with the radius and it's a pretty important joint part of the radiocarpal joint we are not gonna start up here let me get rid of my writing we are not going to start here because that doesn't touch the radius. It's on the pro it's on the thumb side. And some people will say maybe it's S L T P starting here, but it's got to be this guy cuz it touches the radius and it's a little bit bigger. So no matter what direction this diagram is facing, whether it's fingers down, fingers up, fingers to the left, fingers to the right, whatever, you have to be able to find that scaphoid. And then for the second row, the distal row, we're going to go all the way back over to the thumb for T, T, C, H. Okay, so let's take a look at, this is in the same direction. I just threw this diagram in here and it's all, um, you know, to the side. Really challenging. Um, so, what's the rule? Proximal row, thumb side, must touch the radius. Oh no, we don't have a radius on this picture. Proximal rows down here. Okay, so now you got to choose. Is it that one or is it that one? We got to find the scaphoid. Which one is it? Well, it's not this one because there's no way that if the radius was sitting here that this bone would be touching it. 
Okay, so there's our starting point. We're going to work from thumb to pinky. S, L, T, P, scaphoid lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. Notice the pisiform is stacked on top of the triquetrum. That's an easy check. And for the second row, all the way back to the thumb, trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamate. Now, think for a second. If you start in the wrong position, and you forget the rules, and you start here, and did SLTP, TTCH, you got eight wrong right away. So very, very important starting point on the scaphoid. Okay, back to our notes. It doesn't get any easier than this, except maybe the rib cage. <laughs> so um, aside from the carpals of the wrist area, we have the metacarpals. And that's all these right here. So I'm just going to draw a line on them so you can see them. And there's five metacarpals in each hand, so we need to differentiate. This is metacarpal 1, metacarpal 2, metacarpal 3, 4, and 5. And we got some articular cartilage covering those uh, distal ends and the proximal ends, which you can't see very well. So we number the metacarpals, starting with the thumb, number 1, and the pinky is number 5. So metacarpal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or you can use the Roman numerals if you prefer. doesn't matter. Always starting with the thumb. Now, each metacarpal has a portion known as the base, the shaft, and the head. The base is essentially the proximal epiphysis. Remember, that way is proximal. So base all the way across. You get the idea. That's going to make a joint with the distal row of the carpals. Shaft is in the middle, and then the head of the metacarpal is the distal end, making a joint with your phalanges. So, base is in red all the way across, shaft is in the middle, head is distal for the metacarpals of the hand. Now the same thing is going to work for the phalanges. So we've got 14 bones that are known as phalanges. And we have to be able to differentiate between, obviously, these three bones in one finger that are called phalanges. So first off, we're going to differentiate between this bone, this bone, and this bone. And um, I'm just going to write this up here, that the singular of phalanges is phalanx. Okay, that's that's important. People say phalange, and that is just not correct. So, um, let me see. I'm gonna use an arrow. This bone right here is the proximal phalanx. Here's the middle phalanx. Here's the distal phalanx, and that's gonna be the same across the way except for the thumb. We'll get there in a second. So if you're going to color, we're going to do those same, maybe I should use different colors. Um, proximal phalanx. Proximal, 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 proximal. Middle phalanx. Middle. Sometimes people say intermediate. Middle. Middle. No middle. And not that many colors left. Distal, 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 distal. Okay, so I'm just going to abbreviate. This is the proximal phalanx, middle phalanx. Mm, get on there. Distal phalanx, all the way across. And the thumb you can see is lacking the middle. It has a proximal, it has a distal, there's no middle. Finally, um, we're going to apply these same terms, base shaft head, to each phalanx. So I have the luxury of erasing all of that. Let me do the same thing with my colors. I think if I can remember, the base of the each phalanx is the proximal part. Look at that tiny little thing. 
the shaft is in the middle and the head of each phalanx is distal. Okay, same, 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 except there's no middle phalanx. All right, anything else on this word list down here? That's it. So how do we, lastly, let's say you had an accident and you broke part of your hand. And I'm going to put an X on this part right here. And I'm going to be very specific about it. You have a fracture right there. How are we going to indicate where that fracture is? Well, we got to differentiate because we've got 14 phalanges. So what will we say? That is the, what part of that phalanx is it? Is the base shaft or head? Well, it's the shaft. Well, of which bone is it? Well, it's the one, two, third. We use those same numbers from the metacarpals and we extend them up. First, second, third, um, proximal, middle, distal. So that's going to be the prox, um, excuse me, middle phalanx is where your little imaginary fracture is. Shaft of the third middle phalanx. And people would go on maybe to differentiate that this was on a left hand or a right hand. Okay, so let's do one more of those. I'll use a different letter. Um, let's go with a Z. Fancy. And I'm going to put that there, right there. This is going to be, where can I write this? Here. Oops, wrong way. This way. Where is that? How, if you have a fracture, an imaginary fracture there, where is it? Well, which part of the bone is it? Is it the base shaft or head? It's going to be the head. Of what number? Second, which bone? It is the proximal, I'm going to abbreviate, phalanx. Head of the second proximal phalanx. Okay, if you have some issue with the metacarpal, all you would say is the head of the second metacarpal, or the head of the third metacarpal, or the shaft of the fifth metacarpal, whatever it happens to be. Okay, and that should be enough to. Um, fill out your worksheet and you should be able to complete the last page um, of review. Thanks for watching.